It is 1 p.m. in Amman. It is 6 a.m. in New York. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. Well, he's finally done it. Andy Murray has ended Britain's long wait for a major win in men's tennis. The Scot beat the defending champion Novak Djokovic from Serbia in the final of the U.S. Open in New York. Murray's win was the trigger for a million conversations on social media, and some sports stars have been tweeting about it too. Rory was a Monday Murray won't soon forget. Let's bring in Amanda Davis from CNN's World Sport. Not bad at all. It wasn't bad. It was a Monday into a Tuesday yes. here in London, of course. There's a lot of bleary eyes and, and tired heads uh, this morning because it went on till kind of almost 2 30. Yeah. the beginning all right amanda we'll see a bit yeah, later on later. uh here on world sport as well switching gears hollywood star angelina jolie is drawing attention to the plight of hundreds of thousands of syrian refugees while well, the united nations ambassador visits jordan's zatari refugee camp on the syrian border the u.n 80,000 syrian refugees the country's foreign minister ahmed davutoglu says the u.n should consider setting up a buffer zone in inside Syria if numbers in his country climb to more than a hundred thousand. Meanwhile in Lebanon, the country closest to the stricken cities of Homs and Hama, more than 66,000 refugees are getting help. And Iraq is also hosting thousands of refugees, 20,000 at the last count, even as it tries to put its own brutal civil war behind it. Well, we've got correspondents following the story in Lebanon and Jordan. CNN's Mohammed Jamjoun is in Beirut. But first, we want to take it to Sarah Seidner, who's on the line for us from the Zatari refugee camp in Jordan. Sarah. Yeah, we're here in al Zafri refugee camp where there are 30,000 uh, people, 30,000 Syrians who are now refugees uh, living in a very dusty, tented area. Uh, a lot of complaints about their difficulties here, but of course the okay, biggest... In Jordan, let's take you now to Beirut uh, and Mohammed Jamjoun. Mohammed, let's first talk a little bit about Lebanon as well, uh, housing uh, thousands of refugees. Well, that's right, Monita. Uh, at last count, the UNHCR is saying uh, at least 66,000. Right, Mohammed, thank you. Mohammed Jamjoun there in Beirut. And live from London. Can there ever be peace between Al Qaeda and the West? Survivors of the 9 11 terror attacks and emergency crews who were at the scene will be given more medical help to treat illnesses resulting from the attacks. There's already a, a U.S. federal program to support people with illnesses believed to stem from that day. Now, it's it's being extended to cover a further 58 types of cancer. One of the suspected key planners of the September 11th attacks is the current Al-Qaeda leader, Ayman al-Zahwahiri. His brother, Mohammed, tells CNN that he's ready to help mediate be peace between the terrorist network and the West. Mohammed al-Zahwahiri spoke to senior international correspondent Nick Robertson in the Egyptian capital, Cairo. Nick is back here in London to tell us about their meeting. Quite interesting that he wants to broker some sort of uh, peace deal with the West. It is. He's been in jail for a long time. He was released uh, in Egypt about five months ago. Quite so a few demands there by uh, Mr. Al Zawahiri. It is unlikely that the United States would ever agree to a negotiation with them. They've made a policy of not negotiation with people who they claim are terrorists. So, are there likely to be more bombings on Western interests? Um, it's quite possible. Al Qaeda still plans for that. And it's I something think when you certainly, from the way you look at it, it's it's laid out in such a, a very clear, concise, focused manner. It's very precise. Look, it's, it's those fundamental jihadist terms. You get out of our lives and we'll stay yeah, out of thank yours. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. And we'll have much more after the short break. Do stay with us here on CNN. Welcome back. In South Africa, a five-star hotel has opened, offering luxury swimming pools and all-you-can-eat fish dinners. But before you think of booking your room, hold on. It is for penguins only. In the second installment of CNN's series, Going Green, Your Green World, Errol Barnett looks at the latest efforts to save the African penguin from extinction and finds out why its plight could be a worrying sign for humans as well. Tourists gathering at Boulders Beach, just outside Cape Town, are clamoring to get a photo of this, the African penguin. Tourists, they like these little creatures. It only took one gun to end four lives in the French Alps. Investigators say a single semi-automatic pistol was used to kill three members of a British family. Development in the investigation. Yeah, this is an interesting development because it sort of reinforces that speculation that this could have been a contract killing, clearly to kill not just the people in the car, but the cyclists passing by with just one gun. And the police, uh, as in many other murder investigations, they have to piece 
together little bits of information, whether it is a photograph that's caught, whether it's you know a, a, a track, a footprint, or something like that. And it seems that that's what the case is, uh, this case is going. Yeah, what they've looked at is right now, the, the ballistics, the, the 25 shell casings they found at the scene, this is how they were able to determine that one you weapon. You know, you and I were talking about this before, and it's, it's hard for anyone to understand at any age uh, something like this happening, this tragedy happening, and for imagine two little children. Um, you, you can't begin to imagine what they're going through. Yeah, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old girl. The four-year-old is now here with close relatives, mm. but it's still, as you can imagine, going to take a lot, a lot of time for her to recover. All right, Atika, thank you very much for that, Atika Schubert. Torrential rains and flash floods have wreaked havoc in Pakistan over the past week. Meteorologist Mari Ramos is at the World Weather Center with more details on that. Mari. Uh, yeah, Monita, unfortunately, uh, the rain has been uh, just uh, spectacular in terms of numbers here. All right, Mari, thank you very much for that. Uh, do stay with us here on World One. When we come back, we reconnect with Amanda Davis and more on Woods. Big Three in men's tennis now have some company after Andy Murray's historic triumph at the U.S. Open. Amanda Davis is back here with all the details on that. Hi, yeah, we've got a new world number three as well after yeah. Murray's victory. He's always been there or thereabouts, but now he's finally got that title that he's been waiting for. It's been a seriously long well, time. Good stuff as well. All yeah. right, Amanda, thank you very much. You are watching World One live from London. Brit Max Foster joins us now live on that. A, a worrying situation, not just for Captain Wales, as he's known there, but also for the, the military that work with him. Uh, yeah, I, I had a, a conversation with a, a military source last night. and the Pictures would be great, and you know, it's nice that you chose specifically the beachside ones. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, Max, our royal correspondent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao has opened uh, the World Economic Forum in Tianjin. Last hour, he addressed the gatherings more than 2,000 delegates from 86 CNN nations. CNN, Stan Grant. Stan. According to us there from the World Economic Forum. You're watching World One live from London. I'm Anita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us right here on CNN.